How you doing, everybody? Today we're going to take a quick look at Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Directed by James Wan and starring Jason Momoa, Patrick Wilson, and Yahya Abdul-Mateen. After the events of the first Aquaman movie, Arthur is trying to balance his time between raising his son, Arthur Jr., and ruling the Kingdom of Atlantis. It's not going great. Raising a child or running a kingdom on their own are not easy. Trying to do both is hell. Things get worse when the Black Manta returns to get revenge on Arthur for the death of his father. And Manta has made a new friend, the spirit of an ancient king who has possessed the Black Trident. You know, as you do. I very much enjoyed the original Aquaman. It was big and loud and dumb, but I had fun. This movie is also big and loud and dumb, but somehow not as much fun. And the main problem is Aquaman himself. In the first movie, he was a bit inconsistent tonally. In this movie, he is much more consistent. Unfortunately, he's consistently annoying. I think I can count on one hand the number of lines of dialogue he has that aren't quips. It just feels like Juan is trying way too hard to emulate Guardians of the Galaxy, and it's not really working. And I'm not saying the movie should not be silly. It's Aquaman. It has to be silly or it's not going to work. But there's a line. And they leapt over that line almost immediately. One of the very first scenes is Arthur changing Arthur Jr.'s diaper, and Jr. pees into his father's mouth. This is how the movie begins. The very end of the movie is also pretty dumb, as Arthur has to give this big impassioned speech, which was pretty good up until the very end where he just ruined it. And based on the crappy green screen effect, that looked like it might have been a reshoot. And if that is the case, I have to wonder what the original version of that scene was, and was it less lame? And the comedic moments in this movie aren't all bad. Some of it works, like the stuff with Arthur's octopus sidekick Topo. I liked Topo. Topo was great. Arthur needs to shut the fuck up. Patrick Wilson returns as Arthur's half-brother Orm, who is reluctantly drawn into Arthur's quest to stop the Black Manta. I think this is the character I most identified with, as he is endlessly frustrated with his brother, and so was I. Amber Heard also returns as Mira, with much less dialogue and a much better wig. And Abdul Mateen is back as Black Manta, who is now the main villain. And it's too bad he wasn't in a better movie, because he does make a really good comic book villain. He wants revenge for his father's death and is willing to go to ridiculous lengths to get it, even bargaining with an evil spirit and risking the destruction of the planet. He is a very good actor, and I hope he at least got a decent paycheck out of this. And one of his henchmen is played by Randall Park. And, you know, I like Randall. He's a funny guy. The problem is he doesn't have a lot of range. He's basically always playing the same character. And I've already seen that character in the MCU. Do we also need it in the DCU? Apart from that one moment I mentioned near the end of the movie, the visual effects are very good overall. I am still amazed at what they can do with the underwater hair. That just looks incredible. Unfortunately, a lot of those visuals were just rehashing better movies. There's a scene where Arthur and Orm visit an underwater pirate village, which is basically just the Star Wars cantina. And that evil spirit that possesses the Black Trident is the King of Necris, which is basically a kingdom of the undead. And I will be damned if it does not look exactly like the Witch King's castle in Return of the King. Considering how great the visuals were in the first movie, it's a shame that this ended up being so derivative. But I will say one last good thing about the movie before I wrap this up. At least they made Arthur's trident look like an actual trident this time around instead of a quindant. But overall, considering how much I enjoyed the first movie, this was a disappointment. I have seen worse, but I've seen a lot better too. I don't think this is worth paying to see it in theaters. You're better off just waiting for it to hit streaming. And that's all I have to say about Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Till next time, take care.